this is an unrehearsed program. The views expressed are those of the guests and not necessarily those of the producer. Today's topic. Looking at protest in retrospect in Passion for Truth, award-winning program. Welcome to another edition of Passion for Truth. How do protests shine a light on human dignity and how does history judge them in retrospect? How would the history judge the Tunisian fruit vendor who set himself on fire in a small town and became an overnight voice for freedom all over the world? Will the Middle East democracies credit him with the fact that his suicidal acts sparked protests all over the world and made people rise up against their rulers? What has been the fate of those who inspire people in the streets to get their voice heard in other parts of the world? Have they now been remembered as heroes? Let's see what our panelists have to say next. Dr. Edward Hudgens from the Atlas Society, formerly an editor at the Cato Institute. Scott Wheeler, Executive Director of National Republican Trust PAC. Dr. Amarjeet Singh, Director of Voices for Freedom, also columnist for several newspapers. Dr. Abul Hassan Ansari, a researcher on the historical perspectives of Indian events impacting on Muslims in India and abroad. And Dr. John Waldeis, formerly a President and Vice Chancellor of Central Buganda University. Welcome you all. Starting with you, John, everywhere this year people have complained about failure of their leadership in some ways. But the suicidal act of the Tunisian fruit vendor um, in a small town sparked protests all over the world. And will the people in the Middle East credit him with the credit as a hero? Well, that's a good question, but a difficult one to answer, uh, because time, of course, uh, will tell whether or not that is so. But at the moment, he certainly is considered the hero of the people because he made the ultimate sacrifice, which is his own life. And so people at the moment will see him as a hero. Whether at the end, say 10, 100 years from now, he'll still be a hero or just a mark in the history book, we don't know. And uh, Dr. Nasari, what is remarkable is that this year began as independent, uh, uh, protests began as independent affairs, not backed by uh, existing political parties or opposition parties. I think this, uh, first of all, let me comment about this uh, suicide thing. I don't think anybody who commits suicide should be named as a hero. Hero of a movement or, 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 or hero. Uh, but hero the circumstances under which. The situation in, in Tunisia, if you look into the history from, I, I'll tell you from the very beginning, uh, Bu Rakiba was the, uh, the, the prime minister of, or of president, whatever he was. He was a puppet of the West, and the people, the masses, didn't like that. And that has been kept on going and going and going. The condition has become much worse. So the people were looking for some spark. And they would have rebelled sooner or later. If I were him, I wouldn't commit suicide. I mean, I will launch a peaceful movement. If necessary, I'll pick up the arms to liberate the country and liberate the people. That's the right thing to do, not simply committing suicide. And I don't think this will be forgotten as the time goes by. Because somebody who commits suicide, I don't know how he can be a hero. That's it. But do you make of it, uh, Dr. Singh, was his uh, sacrifice in vain, or do you think he will be known as a hero uh, in times to come? I think there is a popular English saying, uh, nothing succeeds like success. So I think in the end of the day, uh, when we look at uh, Tunisia, then Egypt, then Syria, Bahrain, even the same system is coming back in one form or the other. In Egypt, the uh, Islamic Brotherhood, uh, the same army back in Libya, the uh, new kind of system which seems to be on the same pattern as was the previous one. So I think in the end of the day, though, for the discussion's sake, that may be considered as a turning point in the Middle East so-called Arab Spring that uh, began with the suicide of that uh, fruit seller. But uh, I think in the end of the day, it will tell whether any real change happens in that part of the world or not. That is what will define all these events of the Arab Spring. Scott, uh, Dr. Musari raises an interesting point that instead of a suicide, he could have, uh, he did have the options. He could have done something else 
to ban movements, to join others in protests and things like that. But the stakes are very different in different places. I mean, in North America and most of uh, Europe, protesters do not get tortured. But in Russia, China, India, uh, Pakistan, protesters, when they enter the streets, they do not know that some of, they know for sure that some of them will be beaten uh, or uh, shot. So they cannot uh, rise up to demand freedom from uh, oppression just like that. Yes, you're absolutely correct. And for the Time magazine to equate this young man who set himself on fire to protest the persecution that he and his family had faced is so outrageous and obnoxious to compare them to spoiled brats on the streets of Manhattan uh, who who are protesting <clears throat> for for better uh, computer somebody else's stuff mm -hmm. this man set himself on fire for human rights and dignity and these people are are sitting out uh, in squalor for the purpose of wanting somebody else's money. Mm -hmm. It's such an outrageous comparison. I think it, it further proves that uh, once great brand of Time magazine has become a complete farce. Mm -hmm. Where do you come on? Ed? Well, I, I agree with Scott certainly on that, and I, but I also agree that suicide is probably not the best way to go ahead to spark revolutions. Uh, the, the, by the way, there's there's another tradition that I think is uh, very bad. Um, when Margaret Thatcher was prime minister, a, an Irish uh, uh, extremist, uh, Bobby Sands, I believe was his name, said, I'm going to starve myself to death unless Miss Thatcher does all the things that I demand. And she said, okay, starve yourself to death. And he did. And he died. And I didn't think his demands were things that she should have met. And, uh, you know, this kind of, uh, I'm going to hold my breath until I die unless you do everything I say. Uh, this is kind of stupid. But the, I mean, there are more serious issues in the Middle East and elsewhere concerning how do you spark revolutions? How do you come up with a regime that, in fact, is not going to be, for example, run by the uh, Muslim Brotherhood that are just as repressive and uh, abhorrent? And so these are the real, these are a lot of the issues. How not only to spark a revolution, but how to make a revolution in the sense that America made one that worked, France made one that guillotined people. I think uh, I would like to make a comment on this ideological issue of suicide, whether justified or not. Uh, in present day China, there are news about some uh, Buddhist monks starving themselves to death against the regime. <coughs> And uh, Mahatma Gandhi, the 20th century man, he always threatened uh, the British regime with the fast time to death, and even now Anna Hazare presently on. So I think as far as ideology goes, maybe the Pacific traditions, Buddhism, or maybe Catholics at some stage, mm -hmm. uh, they may be thinking it as a part of uh, uh, proceeding their aim by doing that. But at the same time, I think sometimes it's not one act which makes a change. It is already when we say that things are to the brim and any ignition somewhere in the form of suicide or in the form of any challenge or even somebody pointing to the regime with a finger saying here is the person who is guilty and then everybody picks up the finger and starts pointing out. That may be uh, the triggering point but uh, in itself I don't think that any suicide anywhere can make a change. Uh, let me interject here. Uh, you brought the Gandhi string. I was going to bring that one up that Mahatma Gandhi has pressurized the British and we were when they were fighting for the freedom. Mahatma Gandhi went on the ten times fast unto death. Unless we meet we meet our demand, I, I just want to go to fast unto death and die. He if the British did not carry out or Gandhi would have died ten times before mm -hmm. I, I would have taken my head off for Gandhi if he died in one if you say it, then you mean it. Otherwise, don't do it. Second thing is that I will bring out to the Bhagat Singh. He, he was a shrewd politician, not a saint. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll give you two examples. <laughs> yeah. I like Bhagat Singh. We were all fighting at the same time. He bombed the British Viceroy and he was hanged. <clears throat> For me, he's a hero. Now, if he committed suicide, that would have been, I mean, the end result, he would have lost his life. But if he says that I'm killing myself because my dignity or my country's dignity, that is a stupidity. It's not a heroism. What about the Tamagazes of Japan during the Second World right, War? Right, 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 right. But for, for some people, self-immolation is the only form of protest yes, available as to in them. Buddhism, particularly. It's either yeah. take control and set yourself on fire, or the government is going to execute you for protesting. Mm -hmm. Buddhism is different. Um, Buddhism is a truly 
peaceful religion founded by a former Hindu called Gautam Buddha. But what I'm saying in our faith, I'm a Muslim, I speak on behalf because this fellow was a Muslim. First of all, suicide is never allowed under any situation, regardless what, whether for yourself or somebody else. There were other options. If nothing else, pick up the arms, go underground and fight for your freedom, fight for the betterment of your country, fight for the betterment of your, your own people. If you die, you are a martyr from my point of view. But in, in the case of Islam, though, the suicide is tolerated and no, encouraged. No, and tolerated all over the place. No, no, you no, might, your version of Islam might disagree with it, no, but no, the, the Middle talk, East and is racked with it. Am, we have the smoldering remains am, of uh, talking, the world. I'm talking Trade about Center. the true Come Islam. On. I don't know how many of you know. If I ask you how many people in Islam here, how many people know? The four pillars. Five. Yeah. Five. The four. I let four, correct five. you. In so our culture, Islam is what they make it, and what they made it is no, no, but let me tell you what. You do as an individual for your own benefit. It has nothing to do with religion. Mm -hmm. I give a common example, which I am not very happy to do that. Christianity is a great religion. A lot of people go to seminaries to learn the Christianity. If those priests have molested the children, mm -hmm. is it a problem with the Christianity or the individual problem? Well, you don't blame Christianity. You okay. don't blame the scripture no. does not. Okay, all right. We are we are digressing here. May I, may I say something? Uh, sometimes uh, uh, the suicides or other forms of protest is is an outcropping uh, of frustration mm -hmm. when uh, someone has, sees something wrong and is cannot get a, a redress for the problem, then sometimes drastic methods are used to bring attention to the, the problem. Uh, obviously the fact that we are talking about the fruit seller setting himself on fire illustrates that point. We are talking about him because he took these drastic measures whether we agree with it or not, and now we're talking about it. And many of the protests, I would say probably most of the protests, uh, are a result of that frustration. Okay, let, let, let's uh, shift the gears for a moment. Hindramwala uh, uh, was a rebel who fought against the oppressive rule of Indira Gandhi in 1984 and conducted massive and yet ineffective protests. How does the Indian society remember him, um, and Dr. Singh? I think firstly we'll have to look the whole uh, movement, or uh, as Pindawale was the man of the movement at that time, we'll have to look at 64 years of uh, post-Indian independence era, that uh, six were a third party to the transfer of power negotiation while Britishers left uh, subcontinent. Uh, Sikh leadership at that time decided to join India on the promises made by Gandhi and Nehru that no constitution in India will be accepted which won't be acceptable to the Sikhs, number one. Number two, they said a province in the north will be carved out where Sikhs may also be able to feel the glow of freedom. So on these two promises, Sikhs decided to join Indian Union. What they found out that in the Indian constitution, even until today, they have not accepted Sikhs as a separate religion. They clubbed them under Hindu acts, Hindu succession act, Hindu marriage act, Hindu court bill. So the movement for actually kind of freedom in some limited autonomous form was going on since 19... 40s, late 40s, it continued in 50s and 60s. Pindrawale rose on the scene in 1977. He became the head of Tandami Taksal. And during that time, a peaceful agitation was started by the main political party in Punjab, Akali Dal, and which was not for cessation of Punjab from India. This was for an autonomous structure in Punjab, so that three, four departments are with the central government, and the freedom is granted to the Punjab. That was the biggest peaceful movement in Indian history. Look at even Gandhi's Quit India movement of 1942. Only 35,000 okay, people what went, went to the wrong? jail. What went wrong? I think if I use the term uh, Hindu majority, it may, it may look like a uh, kind of communal uh, this uh, definition. I'll use the word permanent cultural majority. Now when we talk about the peaceful agitation, when the Gandhi started peaceful agitation, Britishers in no time in India were more than 40,000 or 50,000 in number. There were mm -hmm. 330, 330 million Indians. Six are a microscopic minority in Punjab, less than 2%. So in the small agitation which continued between 1982 and 1984, over 
200,000 sex court in arrest. That is on record. That continued uh, for two years. And Indira Gandhi knew that she couldn't suppress this. There was a electoral politics and all. And eventually, during those two years, this permanent cultural majority created an environment through the media, which it is called is very free media. No, okay, it's state me, control, me. where there was hatred for the Sikhs, hatred for the Pindrawale, who was the leader of the Sikhs at that time. And that is when the attack on Golden Temple took place. Okay. That is where let, it ended. Let me go to Dr. Nusari. Why is he known as a suicidal? Why why the history books describe him as suicidal? Uh, I don't agree with that. Uh, that he was suicidal. I mean, I have a great respect for Sant Bajran Wale, regardless who says what. For example, I mean, uh, I can take you way back then what history he told you about Indian history in the time of Aurangzeb, uh, when Rutherjee Bahadur Singh was, was slaughtered. That created a lot of problem between the Muslims and Sikhs. Otherwise, you look at Baba Nanak. Baba Nanak, uh, he, he, the, the his Golden Temple was founded by a Muslim because he invited a Muslim Mirzab to put a foundation. So we were so close. You have to look at the politics of Brahmins. Brahmins, about Brahminism, I call it the roots of all evils in India. And these people have played their card very well since the death of the Guru Gobind Singh. Uh, between the Sikhs and Muslims, it created a problem. You can do injustice to a certain extent. People will get fed up and will take up the arms. That is what Benjaminwala did. I mean, there was a peaceful movement. Indira Gandhi or other people should have sat down. Character of, uh, of, of uh, this Brahman is well known. They promised to Kashmir they will hold the plebeian side in 1947. 56 years later on, nothing. So what I'm saying, don't go in the promises. These guys are very good in manipulating you. They have manipulated six against the Muslims, created a lot of problems, okay, and finally when the six fed up, they pick up the arms. I would do the same thing. And I think the interesting part is even before attacking the Bar Sahib Golden Temple, there was not a single case registered against Pendravale. The thing is, if he was a criminal, as is now being preached by the Indian media, then a case should have been mm -hmm. registered, the authorities there mm -hmm. should have been told that this is the case, he should come out and face it, it was not, it was a black okay. attack. Let me, let me go to Ed. Mm -hmm. Ed, how did he fail as a maker of history? How did, uh, are you familiar with I him? Can't, I mean, I, I, I cannot, uh, we can only say that 50 years from now, uh, yeah. or 100 years from now, how any particular individual is going to fare as a maker of history. But it is interesting, as I'm listening to this discussion, in one sense, as an American, I don't have a dog in the fight, we like to say. In other words, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not a Sikh, I'm not a Hindu. No, I'm, very but, interestingly. But, 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 but here's my point. As, as sort of an outsider, I look at it and I say, you know, I wonder if 50 years from now, 100 years from now, I'd like to see it even sooner, these questions won't bother people because they, their identity will not be so tied with I am first and foremost a fill-in-the-blank Sikh, Muslim, Hindu, and which sets themselves off against others. One of the things that's happened in America over its history. Um, are you saying that the that religious identity will be diffused? I hope so. From today? I hope so because in the West, it used to be in the Thirty Years' War and much of Western history was basically uh, armies slaughtering each other over religious differences. And one of the things, certainly in the United States as well as elsewhere, that we've tried to do is have the notion of tolerance. So, sure, you might be a Catholic, a Protestant, a Jew, a Hindu, whatever that happens to be, and that's your personal thing. But in terms of society. People get to people get along together fine and so forth. I'd and love I, to see that sort of what I call liberal tolerance. I, I must have in, in objected. In India. Well, yes. you said Ed, the Mao, Stalin, and and Hitler uh -huh. were all atheists, and so the, 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 name, the most people were slaughtered. Let me, let me, in the let me excuse me. Let me let me no be, let me be, let me be clear. In terms of an irrational ideology whether whatever it, it, it is by the way North Korea in a sense you could call it a theocracy okay it's an irrational ideology it's not in the enlightenment tradition so whether it's a political or a religious one the point is it's an irrational ideology that's my whole point. Let, let me make a point yeah. uh, in 84 or since then it's not a fight between the Sikhs and Hindus as some Indian media like to portray it is between the 
minority Sikhs in Punjab, minority Muslims in Kashmir, minority Christians in Nagaland and Mizoram against the Indian state. That one thing should be very clear. So Pindawale represented the political aspirations of the Sikh minority of Punjab, one thing. International angle or mm -hmm. an American angle. Mm -hmm. The day attack uh, took place on Golden Temple, a Russian foreign minister standing in Moscow in a press conference said, the Sikh militancy is being encouraged by CIA and Pakistan's ISI. That was the time when ISI was in close touch with CIA, Americans were sitting in Pakistan, as in 1979, Soviets had invaded Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. The same thing was said by Indira Gandhi in Indian Parliament, that some foreign powers want to destabilize India. So it's not that Pindrawala phenomena is limited to the Sikhs or that uh, Part, but it was a big Indian game with the Soviet Union of which India was a satellite okay. state to use religion to suppress Sikhs in Punjab okay. and India. Dr. Nasari, why is it that history books so far have, have uh, portrayed him as the one who damaged the fabric of India's unity or when he shook India out of its suppression? Well, why is why is he being painted? Well, if you look at the Indian books, Indian history, it has been <coughs> written and rewritten and rewritten. <coughs> Excuse me. I call it the adulteration of the Indian history. Uh, since uh, this Bajpai guy was there, he changed the whole history. Yeah. So he is going to be projected as a terrorist because they are not going to project him as a hero. The reason is that because if they project him as a hero, they think that the India might disintegrate, people are asking for their own rights, etc., etc. And this creates more problem between the six min other, uh, other minorities and the, and, and, the, and, and the fanatics in one side. As I said, Brahmanism. Brahmanism, I consider the old uh, evils of the old, old uh, roots of all the evils in India. So you have to understand this uh, game of uh, Brahmanism. You need to be a very good chess player. Indira Gandhi was uh, a Brahman, Nehru was a Brahman. Other guys were Brahmins, and if you look at them, chief judges, chief justice, other judges, they are all Brahmins. So what I'm saying, they are not going to project you as a hero unless you are from amongst them. And regardless of what they do, I mean, I know the history, and as I said, Banjan Wana is, is my hero. I'm not a Sikh, but I am on the side of those who have been suppressed. Let me ask uh, uh, John. Mm -hmm. Let me ask John. John, uh, so whether you give somebody a hero status or not hero status depends on the ideology of the ruling government. Is that how you read it in third world countries? Pre precisely. Uh, the people who win a battle write the history. The, pe the losers do not write history, or if they do write history, nobody really reads it. So you, you have it written by whoever party is in power at the time, and that's what it turns out to be. And that's not just in India, that's around the world. Dr. Singh, he was not concerned about the assimilative thrusts of Hinduism in the country, and yet that is the key point that the analysts say he damaged the fabric of Indian society and created divisions between Hindus and Sikhs. I think he was a very honest, straight, upright, uh, religious person. Uh, the forces in the central government of India and their uh, advisors in the electoral battles that how to win the next parliament elections were at their own game. Pindrawale was able to articulate the Sikh political aspirations in a very simple language to the common masses. Thousands of people used to throng him and were looking at him as a role model who has the courage to challenge the Delhi system, telling that how corrupt it is, how they are violating the rights of the minorities. He used to illustrate by examples that what has happened in the previous years. So I think, but it suited Indira Gandhi and her government, yeah. as it was a Indian government was a satellite Soviet state. They were looking at the next parliamentary election for two years between 82 and 84. Such an environment was created through the print and electronic media, which created hatred towards the six. That created an impression that six are out to break the unity and integrity of India. So they created a contrived a situation of lawlessness, and then finally they attacked Golden Temple. And don't forget, 
Not only Golden Temple where Pindravale was stationed was attacked, 37 Sikh historical shrines yeah, were yeah. attacked okay. on the same night. Okay, let me go to Scott. Scott, um, it, it all boils down to you give a hero status depending on who the ruling government is at that time. Mrs. Gandhi was determined to win elections at any cost. And let me quote what she said to General Avedia during Operation Blue Star. And I quote here, I don't give a damn if the Golden Temple and the whole of Amritsar is destroyed. I want Pindramala dead. Uh, these things are very common in third world countries where politicians are looking to the next election and whatever works, works. It doesn't matter whether you commit a, the hero commits a suicide or engages in mass protests. What's your thought? Well, power is a great motivator and the quest for power is, is often uh, um, unquenchable in some of these circumstances and so uh, her approach to, to dealing with the Sikhs caused uh, many of them to uh, to have lasting uh, resentment and this is part of what what uh, what happens I think still even in uh, between Britain and France the Brits mm -hmm. resent the French and and vice versa uh, it's it's part of the human condition and uh, when leaders aren't more pensive or circumspect about their actions uh, in proportion to a greater period of time then uh, the, it has these lasting effects and wounds yeah. I think this is the problem of when you have an autocratic leader uh, with a government that's very, very big and very, very corrupt. You have a caste system, as you have uh, pointed out, and you have very deep religious differences that separate people rather than unite people. It's just an ugly, ugly mix, and it, 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 it's going to produce uh, martyrs, it's going to produce uh, massacres and suicide bombers, and it's going to produce government repression. It's going to be a mess, and again, it's something that India has to work out. Uh, it, it, it has been doing better than I think a lot of people expected. Nailing down the loose ends, uh, do you think people in third world countries can independently credit a hero status to a freedom fighter, uh, starting with you, John? Uh, yes, people will do that. I mean, we can't prevent people from uh, giving a status to a person that uh, they think is a hero. and. Uh, the, very often it's somebody who's done something really outlandish. Dr. Nassari? Uh, I mean, you can give the status of the hero if there's a long-lasting uh, uh, positive impact. Uh, I don't think if there is an emotional outburst because of one guy who puts himself onto the fire mm -hmm. and forgotten in the next moment. I think in the Pindrawale's case, already by the end of the last millennium, 28 million Sikhs around the world voted San Pindrawale as the Sikh of the century. He is already a hero and a martyr. And I'll end with the closing words of Pindrawale himself when he said, we want to live in India, but as an equals, not as slaves. But the day Indian government will attack Golden Temple, sanctum sanctum of the six foundations of Khalistan will be laid. So I think after that there is no meeting ground with the Indian state as far as the six go. Scott? Certainly people who have made uh, grave sacrifices for for a cause uh, are often remembered. How, how it is in perspective what happens with the rest of this movement uh, will be uh, up to others. What's going to be important, what history, what we'll see his in, in, in retrospect, is what came out of any given <coughs> revolution. Is it going to be a George Washington uh, uh, helping to establish uh, a generally peaceful civil regime as in the United States? Is it going to be the French Revolution with guillotines? Uh, is it going to, what is, what is going to come out of the revolution I think is going to be most important? And that's all the time we have. We'll bring you another edition of Fashion for Truth next Saturday and Sunday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all. If you have any question, comment, or suggestion on this program, please send us an email at mstravel at hotmail.com or write to us at 1011 Sod Meadow Lane, McLean, Virginia, 22101. You can also access these TV programs and the radio programs archived on the Internet at your own time on the Internet at our page www.passionfortruthtv.com. 
please watch the TV programs every week at the same station and at the same time. And send your comments to mschavlat@hotmail.com.